Be seated. Our sermon title for this morning is Coming Out of Your Pit. And you may be saying, why this sermon on the first Sunday in January? And I was going to use some other illustration to bring the sermon together, but I'm going to use myself today. Maybe you haven't been in the pit, but I had been in a pit. Hearing about illnesses, the deaths we had gone through, what was going on in the country, in Berkshire County, in this state, I was in a pit of despair, and I forgot for a second who my Savior and Redeemer was. So therefore, when I prayed, it didn't always mean that things got better immediately. But when I prayed, there was peace. I, 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 I begged God, help heal us. We don't need the flu right now. We don't need to be sick right now. But as I did my devotionals, and I have to admit, I remember I spoke with James Coopernick about something. He said, maybe you're going to have to add more devotionals to get over some things. Well, some days, James, I didn't do a devotional because I was that sick. But then one day when I could lift up my head from the pillow, I went to Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and it says, Be not anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God transcends all understanding of those whose mind is in Christ Jesus. That ain't on my script today. But I just had to witness today. I'm not in a pit anymore because no matter what happens, doesn't mean that I'm not going to get upset or hurt or cry, but I'm going to keep saying that verses 6 and 7 of Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything. And when I become anxious, I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on asking. I'm going to keep on believing that Jesus, who is in the center of my heart, will make everything all right. Amen? Coming out of your pit. Now, let me go to my script. But first, before I do that, come with me in prayer. Jesus, use me as your vessel. Let everything that I say bring you glory and honor and praise. Step on toes from the pulpit to the pew. Let us see your majesticness in this word. Change us. 2020 is a new decade, new year, but we should not be anxious for anything, no matter what we hear, because we are relying upon you. Now use me, God, for this message. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I, I, I go on, I told you I was in the pit. I kept forgetting all of the new faces we see around here. Yeah, some of our old faces are not with us, but we're getting new faces in here that God will use. And God will bring back some of the other faces that we're used to. You should have been here Christmas Eve night. At the 11 p.m. worship, we had 90 people. At the 7 p.m. worship period, we had 55. And at that worship period, we had families, parents who brought their children out. A man is right, so we shouldn't be in a pit. And I remember, I have to say this, at the 11 o'clock worship, I was feeling so badly. Larry, which one was it? Larry Bell, I was turning around. You remember that, Larry? And I lost my balance. And Larry said, I have you. 
I got you. And I came on up here, and I forgot how I was feeling. All of this, don't be in the pit because of your circumstances. Let me get to the text. The entire chapter of Isaiah 40 through 43 is about God's restoration and promised protection of us. It speaks to God loving his people. So, because God loves his people, because we are precious to God, created in the image of God, and still today, we are still precious to the Holy One. But we, as God's people, are filled with sin, and we place ourselves in the pits of life, such as being in the pit of distrustfulness of God, in the pit of not surrendering to God's will and plan for us, in the pit of negativity and unbelieving spirits. Preach to yourself, Sheila. In the pit of holding on to past hurts and pains, in the pit of making resolutions and not seeking God's guidance, thereby breaking them year after year after year after year after year. In the pit of not putting God first in our lives. You know what a pit is? When you think about a pit, you think about a deep hole. A deep hole. That it's difficult to get out. That pit being unable to get up and out of a bad area of area or place in your life. We all have pits in our lives that we ascribe to. The world may not know them. We may lie to ourselves about them, but God sees them and knows of them. But because of God's love and compassion for us, God is telling us through the prophet Isaiah how to come out of a pit. First, don't focus on things of the past. Past sins. Ask for forgiveness and strength to move on. God is always willing to forgive and help us overcome our trespasses. But you know what happens to us? We beat up on ourselves. We beat up, oh, I did that before. I promised God I wasn't going to do that again. But here I am already in 2020, only the fifth day of January, and I'm doing it. Forgive ourselves and ask God to give strength. It's not about resolutions. It's about guidance from God. And I love what 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 tells us, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, God is faithful and will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. First thing, don't focus on things in the past. God can and will give you a way out. The problem is, do we accept it? Do we accept God's way out? Nelson Ross and I accepted it. We were very ill. To the point he kept saying, you think we need to go to urgent care? We kept taking Musinex. I kept going downstairs to get him juice. I kept praying. I kept saying, please, God. But if it hadn't gotten any better, we would have gone to urgent care. The urgent care would have been God providing us with a way out. You may laugh and think that's simple. However, the Musinex, the orange juice, the hot tea, and prayer. But the biggest thing, the way out was rest. Rest. God was showing us your bodies need rest. 
I was praying for First Baptist, but I didn't dwell on you all too much. I was praying for myself, rest so that when I came back, I can be the pastor, the under-shepherd that you need, want, and can rely on. Don't focus on things of the past. Then believe that a new thing is going to happen for you. That's the second thing. Believe that a new thing is going to happen for you. It's right there in the text. God says, I'm about to do a new thing. Not just in 2020, but ongoing. What new thing in your life do you need from God? Maybe it's a new attitude, changed attitude. Like Patti LaBelle says. A changed outlook on life. Maybe you need increased faith. Maybe you need not to look at everything so pessimistically. Believe that a new thing is going to happen to and for you. You must believe that your wilderness experiences will not last. The chapter speaks to being in a wilderness, those feelings that nothing is going right. God has abandoned me. Sometimes being in a pit teaches us how to learn and depend upon God and maybe help others through our experiences. I love the book of Genesis. It talks about Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was very loved by his father, Isaac. And the brothers became jealous. Read beginning around the 37th chapter of Genesis on. And they plotted the brothers how to get rid of Joseph. So they threw Joseph in a pit. But Joseph did get out. And what happened? Joseph became well-known and popular in the area in which he was thrown into, not his home. But when the brothers and the father had a famine, guess who helped? It was Joseph. Joseph being in that pit, gaining popularity with Ponifer, the king or whatever he was called. He, Joseph, was able to bring his family up out of the famine and fed them. So sometimes when you're in a pit, it can help others. You can be a testimony to them. You can help them. So don't always think that being in the pit is hopeless. It's how you come out of the pit. And I'm telling you, the only way to come out of the pit is through the risen Christ. And finally, learn how to always call upon God. Learn how to always call upon God. Three things. Focus on, don't focus on things of the past. Believe that a new thing is going to happen. Learn how to always call upon God. The prophet Isaiah tells us that God wants us to come to him with everything. I don't care how big, how small. We don't have to remain in the pits of life. That's how to come out the pit. Call on God through the risen Christ. And I gave you my story to bring everything together. At the beginning. Because I truly was in a pit. But as I say, said, as I see the new faces coming through, and I know how God has the final say, so I always tell you all that when I come and see you in a hospital or on your sickbed. I don't care what the doctors say. God has the final what? Say so. We just have to learn how to surrender to God so that when God says it has to be this way and not your way, we'll say, okay, God, 
not my will, but thy will be done. Is it easy? No, but that's how you come out of a pit. You feel the presence of God surrounding you. Yes, you did what you said you weren't going to do yesterday, but today is a new day coming out of your pit. I'm not going to call any names, but we have a young person in here who said, you know, Pastor Sheila wanted to meet me. I, I, I found you on YouTube, but I, I want to be a part of working on your website because that's what young people do. The person said, all this stuff, you may be old school, Pastor Sheila, but we need to get that website, and, and, and it's doing a good job with the, the, um, the sermons. And I had, the whole time I did pray for that, I kept saying, let that young person come back. Let everything fall into place. Nevertheless, not my will. God is going to come to pass. But I'm not going to be in the pit of disbelief. And thank you to everybody who has worked on it in the past. But God is going to do a new what? A new thing. We just have to be ready for it and not hold on to the past by saying, oh, that's not the way we used to do it. Well, God is telling us to do it a different way, coming out of your pit.